So here we are. It's really good to see. This is uh, Jeffrey Clark, who's with me at the moment. I have to say, first things first, just put me in my place, really, see, because I, um, I think it is. There are times you see us ministers all dressed and you know dressed to the nine, sometimes looking posh. But um, I've just come from something else. But it's really good to see Jeffrey looking um, so relaxed. So this is Jeffrey Clark. Um, welcome to Jeffrey, moderator of the East Midlands Synod of the United Reformed Church. So welcome, Jeffrey. Good to see you. Good to see you, Langley. Right. So um, just just so folks know, Jeffrey and I've got to know each other because we have three congregations in the circuit that are local ecumenical partnerships. Of course, you'll be able to tell me we've got Christchurch, uh, we've got um, Westgate and we've got Whittlesea. OK, and so this is uh, Jeffrey's Helen Cameron's equivalent in the Methodist Church and Helen's a chair of district. So and I look to both here. So it's good to welcome Jeffrey. And the reason that I've asked Jeffrey to come along is simply it's an opportunity for him to say hello to folks. Um, but I, I just just did think, you know, in time on a tradition, it might be worth just asking a few questions. So if you've not had a chance to kind of get the feel for Jeffrey, here we go. So Jeffrey, is it OK if I ask you some 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 Christmas kind of a bit random questions? I think that you're likely to ask me random whatever I say. So go for it. OK, so I guess my my first question is, um, have have you written your Christmas cards yet? Well, Langley, I've got two piles to do. One is the ones that I will send uh, from the house here from us as a family. And the other, in my brand new role, um, I'm told that there's a list of recipients uh, from a Synod uh, Christmas card list. I think you're on it, Langley. So at the moment, that latter pile has to take precedence. It's the work-related pile because my PA will want them by a definite date and she's blocked time for me to write them. Ours... I've done about five or six envelopes ready, and that's as far as I've got with ours. See, now, I just think I'm not worthy, Jeffrey, because, uh, quite frankly, I've never done I've never done Christmas cards, really. I learned very early on in ministry. See, this is a difference in approach. I learned very early on in ministry that it wasn't going to work sort of sending individual Christmas cards to people. And I was so touched because people send us loads of cards. So I then started by put, giving one card to one church, but I haven't done any yet. And I'm terrible. So, OK, that's one nil to Jeffrey. Uh, now, it's interesting with Christmas cards list. Um, uh, here's, here's a challenging question. Who who would be off your Christmas card list this year? Well, you really should expect me to say nobody. You know, I will maintain all the relationships I've got and I will add others. Uh, the temptation, I think, uh, joking aside Langley is to knock off those that we haven't seen for the longest stretch so do you know what the last time we had any contact with persons a b and c on the list was when we last saw them in 2004 but I've stopped that thinking because if I stop that then that bit of contact's gone and the relationship and, and I unlike you because I am in the Christmas card receiving and sending generation uh, I welcome that annual connection with others so my list will only have a deletion by death uh, and sadly uh, as some of us find out you know our list has had a number of deaths across the year it'll have some additions as some new friendships have been made. See, that's, I, I kind of actually have to say, I, I am conscious, I do, I do feel that the cards are important. And I feel very uplifted when I receive a card. Um, but I was sort of thinking, we can't really say, of course we're going to say that nobody should really be off our Christmas card list. But um, President Trump wasn't very high on my Christmas card list last year and, and not this year. I try not to keep things too political, but, you know, that, that, but actually I think there's some, there is something about, you know, we extend an invitation, a welcome to everyone. But the other thing I don't know, the, the, I think there's a parallel with our live stream here, Jeffrey, in that when we started doing our live stream, um, I envisage that we get regular people from church coming on and listening, and that's happening. But what has blown me away are the number of people who connect who are either they were housebound or they were caring for those who are housebound or they were working shifts. And, and, and I have to confess that one of, one, of, one of the groups of people are those who hadn't come to church in some time. I can think of names of people where we would meet in pastoral meeting and go, well, we haven't seen them in a while. Why are they still members of the church? And I would always be wary about this, you know, because taking somebody off their name off a membership list is massive. 
Um, yes. And then these people have re-engaged. So I think it it definitely goes it definitely goes to show. So have you in your brief to, to your time so far has been brief. What's been your most memorable experience so far uh, as you can't as you, I bet you didn't. Ex- I mean, because I'm trying to think when when did you get the appointment and then when did you learn? Oh, this is lockdown. And so it's all must have been up in the air. Yeah. One year ago, let's say today, almost give or take a few hours, it was announced uh, in my church, uh, which at the time was uh, Worksop, again, Methodist URCLEP, and my village church, which was a small Methodist chapel in circuit, uh, that I got the post. So name against post, December 2019, to start on May the 1st. What's the gap between that t- turnaround? You just mentioned it. COVID enders. And so I fizzled out at my two churches. Uh, all the celebrations to end my ministry there that had been put together couldn't happen. I kind of retreated into lockdown as we all did. And then within lockdown was the first moderate in the United Form Church to be inducted in their sitting room uh, using live stream virtual means. So Moderator of General Assembly, Nigel Yoon, was in his house in Cambridge. I was in mine in Worksop. Uh, various other folk taking part um, were all on their screen. So, but it did enable what you've just said, uh, Langley. It, it enables folk to join us for that live streaming that probably wouldn't have come to the service, which was penciled in as being in our joint church at Grantham. Um, now, you know, that there would have been a, some of them wouldn't be able to have got there. So that's when I came in. Yes, May to December 2020 has been dominated, of course, for all of us by COVID. And one of the things I was most looking forward to was getting to know the MAC, getting to know the congregations, getting to know the ministers and members of the East Midlands Synod, something like roughly 129 churches. Uh, I've actually physically been into, to take a Sunday service, one of them in Dustin in Northampton, uh, I've sat in another St Andrews in Chesterfield for us to live stream our synod, and that probably answers the, the presenting question. Mainly memorable, yeah. Probably presiding over my first uh, synod, which was already going to be nerve wracking, but actually layered thick with the fact it was done as a live stream with only three of us at the top table um, doing the meeting. And then three technicians, actually two of whom were from Peterborough, who'd come across to do that for us and with us. Um, And and can I have a second? Yeah, yeah. The other be the other church I mean, which is our church, one of our churches in Leicester, to induct our new minister there. And again, he could only have, and we could only have a capacity of about thirty folk, but live streamed out. So there was the screen in front of us. Even the preacher was a pre-recorded track which came in. Um, that was an incredible experience, but a sense of joy that I managed to get myself to be part of that. But we were launching a new ministry in this new setting. And then we pull the plug and go back into lockdown again. And here we are looking at Christmas maybe coming out again. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy, it's definitely a crazy world. I think the thing that I've seen is... Um, everyone's learning and it's informal learning we've just learned now you know you've got a new webcam plug and it's a case of it's yeah. not just how how we're learning it's how quickly we're having to learn i talked to another another minister another day and he said oh i've got to go langley because i've got a harvest festival with a school i thought okay that's very generous of you giving me your time i was asking how he was and he goes well actually i just need 10 minutes because they're using microsoft teams and i've not used teams before and that's the pace of it and it doesn't really matter i'm thinking whether you're learning to put the silent, whether you're learning to silent the microphone or on Zoom or use production software, we're all learning. It's massive. You said one thing, if I could just be allowed, that, that just intrigued me, um, that might be worth people knowing. You mentioned you were in a Methodist church before. Yes. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Because it impacts yeah. the, the understanding about the LEP stuff. Methodist friends watching can kind of be reassured that my parents were Methodists in a small rural village chapel in East Anglia. And we were in, I know the terminology, in a circuit. And the youth group was an ecumenical group in the main town church. And so I was persuaded to go to that. Uh, And that was Anglican, Methodist, Roman Catholic and URC, a four-way youth group. We attended the evening worship every week. And as we arrived, as I arrived in that group, the URC, I'll give you the place, in Bungie and Suffolk, was courting with the Methodist congregation with alternating evening worship with an ultimate view of full union, which they did. 
I then said to my parents, if I carry on going to church, I want my membership in this URC Methodist. That's there's more going on there. We saw the minister once every six weeks in our village chapel, um, <laughs> the superintendent, Langley, who had 13 churches and we got to see him up as two once uh, once a quarter, actually. That's not bad. Actually. So, That's not bad. Yeah, we're nearly back to that now. And and so I I. I joined there and and felt uh, a call to preach and so was trained as a Methodist local preacher um, on the old continuous assessment. I forget what it was called, that one. Uh, but it brought me out at the other end with a full bone um, application and granted that at the, my recognition service, I would be recognised as both a Methodist local preacher and simultaneously as a URC lay preacher. So I emerged from that with a, that dual kind of identity. I was church secretary by then uh, and felt a sense of call to ministry. My dilemma, Langley, was given that here we are two in one, I've got to candidate for one of the two in the, beyond the doors in the wider church. And it was either or. Right. And URC was where I went. In those days, I particularly liked the fact that the, that there was that that role of elder locally. I liked the fact that in that congregation, uh, by contrast, twenty four out of every twenty six services a quarter were conducted by the minister, and uh, so there was a real continuity of teaching and worship. Now those those things went out the window, but I, I made my home in the URC, trained at Manchester where Northern College had all its lectures, all its meals, all its worship with Hartley Victoria Methodist College and the Baptists, some Anglicans and some Unitarians. So, and then thereafter, all three of my local church ministries have been URC Methodist LEPs. This is the first role in which I've not had a Methodist identity, but I've just been appointed as the co-chair of the National URC Methodist Liaison Committee. So actually... I've got a finger in that pie. So some of my best friends, Langley, are Methodists, actually. But it, it's, it's just been, I just found that it's just been really good and, and how easy you are to relate to and, you know, right off the blocks with a lot of things to kind of get your head around. It's so good to see. But it, the, the, just an interesting comment on, I, I get that, because I think, why was I ordained into the Methodist church? People say, why Methodism? And my answer was because that's that's that, that's the family that's nurturing me at that time um, and kind of think well where else would I go so I kind of I kind of get that but it, it, it's really good to see this coming together um I think what we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to we're going to have a little bit of a break because I'm sure that Jeffrey's got some other uh, I'm going to ask some some more searching questions um that we ask ourselves all the time I think about the future so we'll come back in a little bit of break but thanks just for this moment of time you've been able to give us Jeffrey thank you Langley. <laughs> 